Because uh, when we're talking about service and we're talking about worshiping the Lord, and one thing about the Hope Center, they certainly do both all the time. And um, so, just if you want to know more things, you have more questions, everything's in there. We want to do that. So, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll just continue to worship Him. Father God, we are just ecstatic, excited, excited, Lord, that we can be here and worship You, to lift up the name of Jesus. Ah, oh, there's no name like any other name than Jesus, and we know it, Father. We ask you, Lord, as we worship you tonight, that we just get our hearts ready and our hearts right. That, Father, that we don't focus on anything else 
but you, Lord. That we just, we just have a heart for you. That we just ache for you. We just thank you so much, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you so much for our salvation. We thank you so much for your plan. Oh, Lord, we are so blessed and we know it. So as we move forward tonight, Lord God, we just pray that we just have a great time of worship, fellowship, and lifting you up because that's what you deserve. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. 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 And you feel free. You feel free. You're allowed to clap. You're allowed to stand up. In fact, we prefer it. If you can stand, stand. If you can clap, clap. <laughs>
scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 15, verse 4 through 7. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Sometimes it feels like I'm watching from the outside. Sometimes it feels like I'm breathing. But am I alive? I keep on searching for answers that aren't here to find. And all I know is I'm not okay. This is not where I and it touches our hearts and we go out of here changed. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
And so we're thrilled to be part of that and, and be able to lead that. So, okay. We uh, the, the message tonight is relationships restored. Let me tell you a little story about Jessica. Jessica, uh, well, uh, she she looked as the trees were flying past her bus window, and she was sitting there by herself because well probably nobody wanted to sit beside her since she was so disheveled and in disarray. But who cares? She was having home. She thought about when her mom passed away when she was age 11. It was just her and her dad. And as she came into her teens, they seemed to grow further and further apart. And then that one day, that one day where he had the audacity to tell her no, she was not allowed to go to a party with her friends. And she remembered storming up the stairs, screaming, I hate you, when she slammed the door. She thought, how could he do this? I mean, I'm almost 18 years old. <laughs> what would be like? <laughs> I'm almost 18 years old. Who does he think he is to tell me what I could or could not do? I'm almost grown. So that night, she devised a plan. And she thought, you know what, my birthday's coming up. And we've been saving these savings bonds in my name to do my college. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until you birthday. And I'm going to get the savings bonds. And I'm going to cash them in and get out of here. So she made sure she went to a bank that wasn't local because she knew if somebody local, they knew her dad, and they would tell her about it. So. So uh, she went out and she really did her homework and she cashed them in. And off she went, she got herself a bus ticket on her 18th birthday, cashed them in, skipped school, and headed off in her new life to the big city. And the first few months were amazing. Oh my goodness, she got to stay at some of the best hotels, eat some of the best meals, Amazing how many friends she made. And then the money ran out. <laughs> All of a sudden, the friends disappeared. She found work trying to wait on tables, and washing cars, or whatever she could find to do, just so she could try to eke out something so she wouldn't go hungry. And then she remembered that nice man that she met. Oh, he treated her so well. He invited her to stay. Pretty soon he wanted her to do things that she didn't want to do. And to do things for friends of his. And she thought, I can't do this. And she got out. Next thing she knew, she found herself living on the streets. Using a cardboard box for a shelter. Eating out of a dumpster right behind her favorite restaurant. That Italian restaurant she used to love to go into so much. She remembered when she she used to walk in the front door, but now she was eating out of the dumpster in the back. How things had changed. Well, things were certainly better at home. 
She finally got up the nerve to call her dad. After, after numerous attempts of asking strangers, somebody, this nice man, finally lent her her cell phone. And she made a quick call. The phone rang a few times, and the answering machine. All she could think about is, my dad's such a dinosaur, he still doesn't have a cell phone. But she left a message. And she was going to leave a message and, and, just, and just tell him how much she loved him and how much she missed him and how sorry she was. And all came out of her mouth was, Dad needs me. I'm coming home. I'm taking the bus. She gave the phone back to the stranger. And immediately she started peddling, raising money to get a bus ticket, which took her a while. But that was then, and this is now, she sat in that bus, and she looked out the window, and seven miles away, she saw seven miles away her hometown was there. She'd be home soon. But then her heart sank. What if he didn't get the message? Or what if he did get the message and he wasn't going to put up with her nonsense anymore and she wasn't going to know? Well, this could be all a huge mistake. So now she got a little fear. She was very concerned and she thought, I'll make a new plan. Once I get, get to the, my hometown, I'll, I'll pedal and I'll get some money and get another ticket and get to a different town. Maybe if I have to, it'll be hard enough to go back to that man that treated me so nice. Well, as she exited the bus, and the door so he was there, running over to her, grabbing her, hugging her, kissing her face as tears went down both her cheeks. She didn't even know what to say. And he looked at her, saw her ragtag look, and he said, hey, listen, I wasn't sure, so I brought you some clothes from home. And he handed her a little bag. She was so excited. She hadn't been new clothes or clean clothes for weeks and weeks and weeks, probably even months. And she ran into the lady's room, tried to clean herself up as best as she could. And she came out, and they got in the car, and they headed to the house. And the, 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 the ride was kind of quiet. She didn't know what to say to him. And he wasn't really forcing her to tell her, her anything. He was just so happy that she was home. Well, as they got down the street at her house, it got a little closer. All of a sudden, she noticed yellow ribbons on the fence, on the garage, on the porch, everywhere. She was overwhelmed. She walked in, and there was a whole bunch of people, family members, neighbors, friends, and a big sign that said, welcome home, Jessica. Welcome home. After a little bit, a little bit of time, she saw her Aunt Sarah, which was her mom's sister. He gave her a big hug. And they were talking. And she was telling her how happy to have her there. She goes, you know, I wasn't even sure if my dad got the message. How did he know I was coming in this day? I said, that message weeks ago. And Sarah said, he didn't know. He went down to the bus station every day, waiting for you. And he called me to bring everybody together. When you went into the bathroom, you changed your clothes. Sorry for getting emotional. I get emotional because that's my story. So we're going to study the prodigal, what we call the prodigal son tonight. But that's a lot of our stories. All right? And, and uh, 
and it's, it's, you know, Jesus spoke in parables. So why did he do that? Well, number one, the Messiah would speak in parables. That was one of the reasons. But what is a parable? We've heard hear that word all the time. It's a very good church word, right? Parable. So what is a parable? All right. a, par a parable is a a parable is a uh, a story <laughs> that kind of simplifies. All right the kingdom of God to explain for us to understand it. So Jesus was talking to, and still does to us today, talks to people, explaining in parables, here's a story. I know sometimes you don't get what the kingdom of God is. Most of us don't get what the kingdom of God is. We spend all our lives trying to figure it out. All right? But here's a parable. It's a story. This is how much your God loves you. So we're going to look at uh, Luke today. It's very similar, but we're going to break it down. Uh, we're going to look at Luke at, the, at, at chapter 15. Donna so did a great job reading. We heard about the lost coins. We heard about the lost sheep. All right? And, and so uh, and now we're going to uh, look at the parable of the, the prodigal son. So uh, picking up Luke 15. The verse, I think you have it on the screen, right? I think you have it on the screen, Ron, starting with uh, verse 11. There was a man who had two sons. It's 1511 if you have your Bibles and you want to follow. So there, was a, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. So this young man says to his dad, I don't know if he says, I wish you were dead, but why don't you treat me like you died so I can have some money? After all, I'm young, I'm I, I don't want to wait all my life to have that money. I know what to do with it now. I want to spend it now. So we pick up in uh, 13 and we see this. Not long after that, the younger son got together. All he had set off for a distant country, and there he squandered his love, wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him in the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill the stomach with the pods the pigs were eating, but not one of them gave him anything. So, what happens now is this young man runs out of his money, and all of a sudden he's in a situation, we would call it, we'd call it in America, we'd say with a severe depression. There was a severe depression, all right? And he can't find a job. Can't find a job anywhere. He's starving. So he has to hire himself out. And he hires himself out feeding pigs. Now, for those of us in America, we say, well, that's not that bad a job. Pigs do stink. And if you've ever been around a pig farm, trust me, it's not good. I'm a farm boy. All right? But people do that for a living. But you've got to understand, this young man was a Jewish man. All right, and pigs were, they, 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 they weren't kosher. They weren't allowed to be around them. They were the filthiest beast on the earth. And here he was, having to take care of them and feed them. And not only feed them, he, ha he wanted to eat the pods they were eating. The actual grain that they fed the pigs was something that was not meant for a human. And only the poorest of the poor would eat them just so they didn't starve to death. And here he was, and Oh, man, if I could just eat that, at least I'd have something in my belly. It's one of my favorite spots here. At 17, verse 17. When he came to his senses, just like our Jessica, when she came to her senses. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and he went to his father. Now as we finish the story, we're going to move on to the characters that are involved. What? The characters are involved. We have, uh, we have the young son. We're going to see the older brother. 
and the Father. And so often as we, we study these passages, we really spend time on that younger son. We spend time on him repenting and coming back. But there's some more to the story than this. So let's go ahead and read on and see what happens. We see this. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Then the son said to his father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Quick, bring the best robe, the best robe, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatty calf and kill it. Let's have a feast to celebrate. So what we see is this. This young man comes back with a, a sorrowful heart, a repentive heart. You know, we use again, we use the word repent in, in the Christian <coughs> language. And, and repent really means to turn back, turn back from your ways back to God's ways. And so in this case, this son is the sinner, the one has gone away from God, has chose to follow their life instead of what he thinks is better for him. All right? That he, that, I mean, we've all been there. I know I've been there. I know people in this, in, in, in a congregation they have been, been there where we said, you know, what I do and how I handle things will be much better than what the Bible says and what God says. I know that. Right? I'm going to, I'm going to embarrass them right now, but we have an anniversary today. I'll be young man. I'm sorry to do this to you, Josh. <laughs> this man is one year sober as a hero on that. <laughs> so I'm not going to pick on you because you and I have that same story, don't we? And we thought, well, I know it better than God does. All right? And what happens is all of a sudden we realize that our lives, the way we're running them, is bringing us to extinction, bringing us to poverty, bringing us to all kinds of misery. And we stop back and say, hey, why don't I try it God's way? Amen? Amen. Amen. And there, you know, you're not the only one in here. I'm one, and there's a whole bunch. That none of this story, I get emotional because it is my story. I went through that too. And one day in the middle of the basketball court, 2 a.m. in the morning, I realized I'm going to try your way, God, because I really messed up my way. And so what happens here is we see the Father. And the Father is, of course, our, our loving Savior, our God. Our God. Who Now look at this. When we look at these scriptures, when he was a long way off, when he was a long way off, this young man, he sees him. The Father sees him. He doesn't say, okay, you've got to pay the penance now. You're ready to pay the piper. No. He sees him and runs to him. Runs to him. Now, if we get into it real biblically, in the time that the, the time they wore robes, so they had to literally pull his robe up and run. Ladies, any of you wore a long dress, you know what I'm talking about. He pulled it up to run and ran to that son. Ran to his son and forgave him completely. And said this. He didn't say, okay, you are forgiven, so since you're forgiven, now you still have to pay the breaker. You're going to have to pay. You, you are not going to be part of the family now. That's not what he said, was it? He said, get the best robe I have. Put the ring on his finger. He is part of his family. We're going to celebrate. Amen. And in the two parables that we read before, with the lost coin and the sheep, what do they do? They celebrate. And Jesus said, there's a lot of celebration in heaven when just one sinner comes to repentance and knows, knows God. See, God created us to have a relationship with him. Our father covets a relationship. We are his children. And all he wants to do is be restored and have that relationship. And, and the only way we can do it is what? Through Jesus Christ. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way we can do it. And when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are restored. He throws the robe on us. He puts the ring on us. And we are back with the family. 
Hallelujah is right. Say it again, bro. Wow. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. So, and then he wants to kill the fatted calf. They're going to have a big celebration. And he says this in 24. For this son of mine was dead, but he is now alive again. He was lost, but now he is found. So they began to what? Celebrate. They began to, they began to celebrate. I was thinking of that, that old corn again song. Celebration, man. I thought if we could do it, we need, we need a lot of stuff to do it, right? So, <laughs> so anyway, now we pick up on the other side. Now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really dwell a little bit of time on this. Because a lot of you have heard this message, the first part of the message. All right? You may be here tonight and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You, you may have never said, you know what, God, I know I can't do it by myself and I need you. I need Jesus. Because Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except for me. Amen? Amen. <laughs> But then we have the older brother. And we never dwell a lot with the older brother. So we're going to look at the older brother. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called out to one of the servants and asked him, what's going on? Your brother has come. He come back, he replied. And your father has killed the fat calf because he has come back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours who has squandered your uh, property with prostitutes comes home, you killed the fat calf for him. If anybody tells me they haven't felt that way, I think you might be a liar. Because we kind of do, don't we? We kind of do. And, and the father says this. He says, my son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we can celebrate and be glad because the brother of yours was dead and is alive. And he was lost and he was found. Now, I want you to, uh, I kind of skipped the part there because one thing I want to bring out an attention on. We have the, the young brother who is, most of us without Jesus Christ, all right, as far as in our life before Jesus Christ. Some of, some of you have been Christians almost all your life. I mean, when you were young, when you were just a little one, you found, you found I, my, my dawn is that way. I mean, my, my dawn doesn't know what life's like without being a Christian. She became a Christian at such a young age, all right? And I'm thinking, wow, because I wasted 20-some years of my life before I, I realized it. But we have that sinner, that, that child of God who comes back and restores relationship. We have the father who's already from him and runs to him. But let's talk about the older brother. Let's talk about that older brother. Because that older brother, I hate to tell you this, folks, that's, that's the people at the churches. Some people at the churches. All of a sudden, someone gets saved and well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Let me give you an example first before I get into it. Yesterday, I won't tell you where it's at. Most of you know if you know me. But I was talking to a guy, and he was talking about seeing ears. Does anybody know what a seeing ear is? That's Christmas and Easter. All right. He was talking about people that come to church on Christmas and Easter. First time you heard it. Huh? Christmas and the first time. Okay. That, that the, the seeing ears. And yeah, he's talking about them. He says, yeah, he says, you know, they only show up at Christmas and Easter. I said, well, this is show up at Christmas and Easter. <laughs> and he says, oh, yeah, I hate it. First of all, I've got to park so far away and I have to walk. And I always take my seat. There's no place to sit. And I said, have you read the story about the prodigal son? He said, yeah, I said, read the back up. Read the last, last part. So often we, when I say we, because I'm included in there, I'm the church. Well, who's the church? Believers, right? The people. All right. We forget, we forget to celebrate. We forget to celebrate. I, I didn't know she was going to be here. This is part of my message, Jenny, so I'm sorry for picking on you. All right, but it's a positive pick on you. Uh, when Josh first started coming to church at Dallas Baptist, we were worshiping at Dallas Baptist, 
She had told someone, I won't say who, I won't do that to him. She said, I cannot wait for Plaid community to start because we have never had a heroin addict here. They took it as Jenny was complaining that somebody that was addicted to heroin had come to church. When I know her heart and I know who she is, she was saying, we haven't gone out and found those people to bring them into the body of Christ. And that's what she meant, am I right? Because I know you. You <laughs> can smile. All right? All right? So here's the question. Here's the question that I would, I would challenge each of you with. When someone comes into the body, do we look at what they look like? Do we look at what they smell like? Do we look at what they dress like? Do we look at their, their background, who they were before Christ? We should be what? Celebrating. We should be celebrating. When, you know, and, and, and so I would ask you this, because some of you, some of you are part of Platt, some of you are coming just because you knew there was a Sunday night service here, some of you are from other churches. And, and I would ask you this question. This is a, this is a thing I challenge you with. Is that when that person who has an addiction problem, or that person that just got out of jail, or that person that, well, just didn't take a shower, that person that, that uh, uh, just doesn't talk the same as we do. We've had life groups where they use the F word more than us. Isn't it funny? Brand new people coming in, they don't know the Lord. They drop the F bomb like crazy. We just say, we don't use that here. That's okay. We understand. That's okay. Because, see, we should have such a heart for, for, for God's kingdom. We are all called to be his witnesses and his disciple makers. Amen. And we should have that heart. To do that. Is it inconvenient? You better believe it. Does it sometimes feel bad? Oh, absolutely. All right. But who cares? We should be celebrating. We should be celebrating. So, as we finish out this story, we see that there's always a celebration in heaven. And we see a couple things. We see our Father in heaven when he comes and a, and a, and a non-believer repents and comes back to restore a relationship that he runs to him. But here's the other good news. That was in the scripture I was reading. The Father went out to the church, to the older son, and pleaded with him. He pleaded with him. Our God is not just merciful for those who don't know him and come back, but he's merciful to all of those that know him. And God pleaded, the father pleaded with his older son and said, don't you understand? He was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. Amen? Amen. So he's pleading with us today. We should have that heart. We should have that heart of that father. Because Jesus told us if we love him, we'll do what? Obey his command. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to ask you guys to come up. You can go ahead and start. Now, I'm just going to ask this question. I want to keep every, every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to see if you're cheating and you're looking at me. Don't be looking at me. All right? All right? And here, here's what I want you to ask yourself. The first thing I want to talk about, are you that first brother? Have you played around being a church, or played around going to the home center, or played around doing different things. But have you truly given your heart to Jesus Christ? Have you truly repented and said, Father, I know that I am a sinner. I know I've been doing things my way instead of your way. That I don't think I need you, but now I realize I do. If you're, that, if you're that person, nobody's, everybody, nobody's watching, just raise your hand. If you know who you are, just raise your hand. Okay, very good. All right, all right. And I see it, you put it down. We're good, okay. Now you may be the other brother. 
and you just say, you know what, God? I have really sinned against you. I am your child. And I can't celebrate because I'm so petty with my own stuff. I'm so worried about little things. What kind of music's being played? If the lights are on. If the lights are off. Or if, uh, if, 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 the, if uh, people wear a dress at church or if they don't. Or if they shower or if they don't. I, I get so wrapped up in my own little world that I'm not paying attention to your kingdom. If you're there again, keep your head back, eyes closed. If you're there, just raise a hand. Just raise a hand. All right. Okay, I got you. I see it all. Thank you. I'm going to ask uh, Brandon and Donna to sing a song called Father's Eyes. That we would have his eyes. And if you haven't made a commitment, I already have. We, I know who you are. We can raise your hand. I'm not going to put you on the spot. But if you would like to come forward and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, do so. We'll pray together, and I'll show you how to do so. If not, you can catch me after the service. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get you uh, all concerned about having to come up here. All right? Let me go ahead and close this in prayer, and we'll go ahead and listen to the last song. Father God, we, uh, we again, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you so much for being that father. That father who was waiting, who was waiting. I could, Lord God, I just have this image of you sitting on the porch, watching us down the road, waiting for us to come back and running to you. Oh, Father, we just thank you. We, every one of us that know you, thank you for our salvation. We thank you. For that moment in time where we just gave it all up to you, and we know that our, our joy is now complete. And Father, for those of us that just have those moments, and we all have, and if we don't, you know, we'd be lying to ourselves. We certainly can't lie to you. But when we think, well, you know what? They just don't fit in. They just don't look right. They don't act right. They don't feel right. They don't smell right. And we have those silly hang-ups We'd ask Father God that you would clean our hearts. That we'd have a heart like yours. That when we see every person in creation, we see them with a love the way you do. We see them, Lord God, like you would have us see them. Thank you so much for this time. We cannot thank you enough to be able to worship corporately. To be able to just raise you up and raise up the name of Jesus. We are so thankful for that. And we're thankful for our country we live in that we get to do it. So we ask, Father, as we just finish out the, 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 the time of celebration tonight, that you just work on us. Let your Holy Spirit work on us. Work on us. Heal us. Open our hearts. Let us grow closer to you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ah. Uh -huh.
some stuff and we decided we had some people I know that they want some hymns and so what we thought we would do tonight is um, first of all I'm going to ask you uh, Dr. Jerry Branch is here from Dallas Baptist Church I'm so excited to see him here so we're going to ask you to close us in prayer and bless the food Jerry if you will and we'll sing a couple hymns and please stick around have some coffee some tea some dessert or whatever we're going to do a couple songs and then we'll come join you okay and Denise, I'll let you go ahead and get started, because I know you're always here to gallop. I mean, there. Is everything ready to go? Everything's ready. You're awesome. <laughs> no, no, that's good. They can, they can come to themselves. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's Jerry. Let's all pray, please. Father, we just thank you so much for this time that we've been able to be in your presence. Thank you so much, Father, for this, this place that, was, that is here, where we can gather as believers. Thank you, Father, for the blessing that we were able to have tonight as the word was spoken, your word, as the music spoke to our hearts. I just ask, Father, a, a very special blessing upon Platt and Stan and Donna, Brandon, each one of the other, other folks who's a part. And just lift them up, Father, for the things that you're going to be doing through their lives. So, Lord, I ask you that as we fellowship and we spend a little bit of time together with one another, I pray, Father, a blessing upon the meal, the food, and just uh, let this just be a wonderful time of celebration for you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Feel free to get up and eat anytime you want. I'm going to do a couple for you.